Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Black Hat USA 2023. This is episode 2,988. My next guests, Mr. Olivier Gauden, he's the CEO, and Jonas Daza, the head of research and development for sonarsource.com. Welcome, gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Chuck. Now, today's topic, discovering hidden security issues in code with Sonar Deeper Static App Security Testing. Great conversation. A lot to learn about this. Uh, you guys recently announced a powerful deep analysis to find hidden security issues in code on August 2nd. It's referred to as Deeper SAST. It's new advanced detection, and it addresses the issues that traditional SAST tools miss. We're going to talk about that today. Let's start by uh, by asking what is unique about uh, about the Deeper SAST? We find all kinds of uh, issues in code, right, so that uh, could make your, your code base unhealthy. And security issues uh, are one important um, part of, of the issues that we detect. And the challenge for security issues is typically that um, they can be everywhere in your code base. And when we mean everywhere in your code base, um, we are talking about issues that um, or can be a combination of multiple code pieces. And uh, those code pieces can be also in dependency code. And traditionally, what's, what happens in the market is that we scan code only for um, like the, the code base of uh, the developers, what they coded. But every software project includes many, many dependencies. And now we are able to also find security issues uh, that um, come from an interaction with this dependency code. Now, this sounds a little different to me. So what is Sonar doing differently than others in the market for this space? Yeah, I, th I think if you think about the, the way other vendors have looked <coughs> at uh, this so far is there is a clear separation between the code that you write and the code that other people write. And the code that you write um, traditionally have been, okay, we, we must analyze this code to see whether there are any flow issue whether anybody can input uh, data in the in the in the in the application and it wouldn't be uh, sanitized and when it comes to uh, to dependency uh, the approach of the market has been to kind of go through um, to, to go through the various dependencies to the various libraries and to to review manually um, whether there is an issue or not on these two worlds they exist but they, they exist separately. What what we think at Sonar Source is that at the end of the day, whether you write code or whether somebody else writes code, this is code, and it should des it deserves to be analyzed uh, holistically by by a tool, and this is really what we do with what we call deeper SAST, which is we actually look at the the code that you write. We add up the the code of libraries, and then we we analyze the whole thing. And we find issues that um, we were not able to find by uh, looking at our own code or by uh, looking at a, a database of um, vulnerabilities. Does that does that clarify? Yeah, it does. It makes sense to me. Now, I started doing this a long time ago, like nine years ago, and I was kind of, I'm really self-educated in, in uh, cybersecurity. And what I learned was that most code is open source. I think back in the day, it was much as 80% of code was taken from open source. Is that still the case? Are we still at a, at a high appearance of open source coding? And how do you, or do you address that the same way? I mean, like you said, code is code. I think that's a brilliant way to say it. So I think today it's over 90% of uh, software using uh, dependencies. Uh, developers don't want to um, write every code feature again. They want to spare the rework and then reuse this exis existing open source code, right? And um, the problem with that is really that developers don't know what's in this open source code. They don't have the time to verify the code that they are using. And whenever they use and interact with a piece of code and dependency code, uh, this can lead to a critical vulnerability, right? It doesn't mean that every dependency is vulnerable or whenever you do that, uh, your code becomes vulnerable. But once in a while, when you combine your code uh, in a unique combination with a piece of code of a dependency, it can create a critical security vulnerability. And that's exactly what we can detect now with deeper SUST. Now, let's define clean code. I think that definition may have changed over the years. That's what it sounds like to me. Is it, remember how we used to say, 
uh, this is in real time, and 10 years ago, real time meant a day, right? And now real time is closer to real time. Does clean code mean something different than it did 10 years ago? I don't think it does, but I think we have now come up with a, with a much better definition. So the way we define clean code um, is really code that is consistent, which is if you want, if you want a, a team to, uh, to look after the code, not uh, in general, you have to have consistency in terms of style, but also in terms of how do we solve certain problems, about idiomatics, about um, code constructions. So the so whole code should be consistent. The second thing is the code should be intentional, which means any logical error, anything that is not being used, any, uh, any information, any user input that is not sanitized, any resource that is not released after being used is not considered as being intentional and should be, um, should be fixed. What we also need is a code to be adaptable, which is we need the code to be changeable, basically, which is if you if you if we cannot change code anymore, um, we can con we cannot consider that we are writing software anymore. It's something else, but you cannot call it soft. Um, so we need to make sure that the that the code keeps the, the flexibility uh, to 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 be changed. And finally, the code should be responsible which means um, we shouldn't steal code to, um, to build software. We should not hard code passwords, etc. So there are a whole set of things that need to be looked after to keep the code responsible. And this is how we define clean code, which is consistent, intentional, adaptable, and responsible. So I come from a physical security environment. That's where I started. I was a police officer, worked at the studios. And I had my first computer in 1984, maybe before both you guys were born, possibly. So I see this progression of cybersecurity is coming from here's the internet with basically no passwords to now we have all these security issues, right? I've always thought of it as basically a state of cyber hygiene. We should do better at that. And I'm looking at what you do is a state of cyber hygiene, keeping code clean. That's kind of how I picture it in my, in my head, if that makes sense. So how does deeper sat, uh, how does it support organizations in achieving this state of clean code? And it is a state, right? It's like a state of readiness. You always have to be prepared to have something launch into your application or your time to market. And if it's not clean, you're not ready to go, you're, you're not ready. Yeah, I think um, deeper sat is one part of what it needs to have clean code, right? So. In the end, we want to find all kinds of issues that uh, make your code um, unclean, you could say. And uh, security is one important part. Um, we find all kinds of code causes, but the consequence for security issues is uh, uh, dramatic sometimes for, for organizations, right? And so what Olivier mentioned is this uh, intentional part. Uh, this is really we, where if you use code pieces of um, dependencies, you should be very intentional about what you're doing. And often the developer doesn't have time to really figure out what every piece of code from a dependency is doing. So we make sure it is intentionally used and securely used uh, to achieve uh, a state of clean code in your code base. Now you said something interesting to me. Uh, there's other issues with the code. Of course, you know, it just could be a programming error or something. Do you find that most of the issues are a combination of regular programming errors and, and lack of security coding? Do they lean one side or the other? Um, I think they can be all very interconnected. And that's why we also believe that clean code is so important, right? If you if you look at what Olivier just mentioned, the, let's say, consistent or adaptable code, you cannot really fix your security problems, what we keep on talking about here in uh, the security industry. Um, you cannot continue fixing your problems if you have unmaintainable code, for example, right? Or another example is if you have buggy code, then it can lead to crashes, but those crashes can also lead to security problems. And that's why we believe that all those different pillars of clean code are very interconnected and very important to address uh, collectively so you don't have security problems. Now, I got to say, fellas, I've done a lot of shows, uh, over 3,000 technically. Uh, 
sonar sounds different to me. Am I, am I hearing that correctly? It sounds like you do something differently than most people. And to me, frankly, it sounds more thorough. Is that a good way to describe it? We have been developing the product based on engineering needs, starting from, from our own needs, but also we have a super large community. So I think one of the things that um, is remarkable at SonarSource is how aligned we are with our market, which is we, it's not like, sometimes we are a little bit um, early and and then the, our community catches up and then they, they drive it into a certain direction. So if it if it feels very authentic at, as a as a as a product, it's, it's probably because of this. Um, I just would like to come back on one thing you said earlier, which to me is very very right. You talked about hygiene, and I think this is really what it comes down to, which is if you don't if you don't do if you don't have a good hygiene with your code, at the end of the day, your software is not going to be an asset. It's going to be a liability. Because your code becomes a liability, uh, your your software is going to become a liability. So we are really we are really trying to address this at the engineering level, which is this all this hygiene should happen during um, during the development phase. It it shouldn't happen afterwards. Afterwards, you want to really go for like complex problems, threat modeling, etc. The security team should focus all their time, expertise on energy onto this more complex problem, not not running analysis tools to see whether an OK job was done uh, during the development phase, if that makes sense. It does make sense. You know, and our, our new challenge uh, is uh, AI, ChatGDP. I'm not picking on ChatGDP, but let's just use that as an example. Do you find that this advanced AI now is going to is going to cause uh, new challenges in your side of the industry? Is it going to help? Is it going to hinder? I mean, I think for for SonarSource, I would say it's a it's a real opportunity for the industry. I think it can be a it can be a challenge indeed. Um, and at the end of the day, I think with with the AI uh, generative uh, with generative AI, um, what we are going to see is that more code is being written. Um, whether it's because developer becomes more productive or whether it's because some people who are not developers are able to write application, at the end of the day, there will be more code. And that code is not going to be clean for sure. Um, some of it may be locally clean, but overall, um, this code is going to have to be reviewed. And I think this is where for us, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity. Excellent conversation, my friends. I'm so glad you came on the show. Olivia Godden and Johannes Daza, sonosource.com, S-O-N-A-R-S-O-U-R-C-E.com at Black Hat USA 2023. Good luck to you guys, and hopefully I'll see you in person next year. I'm going to try and make it back in person to the show. Thanks for coming on Security Guy TV. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Chuck.